quick. You've got a decimal and you need to convert it into a beautiful currency formatted string. How do you do that in Swift? Come on in and find out. Okay, so the Coles Notes version of this is as follows. We're gonna format this string in two different ways. One is we're gonna use a number formatter. This is a built-in convenience routine built right into Swift where you can take any decimal after you've converted it to a double and use this thing called a number formatter to format a number style like currency. You can set the group, you can then convert that into a string, and if you present that on something in a label, it will add the dollar sign, it will add the grouping, it'll do all this automatically for you. It's probably the simplest thing you can do. We'll do that first. Then, if you wanna do something more fancy, something like this, here we're gonna use NS attributed strings. We're gonna to have to do something kind of similar, where we're gonna take a given decimal, convert it into a double, but then we wanna break it into dollars and cents. Why? Because that's how we're gonna format this dollar amount here and this cent amount here. We're gonna do some formatting. We're gonna strip out the dollar signs, drop the decimal points. But once we get our formatted dollar sign and our cents, we're gonna pass that into a method. It's gonna create an NS attributed string for us and then we'll be able to present something really nice like this. That's it. All the source code is here. You can come check it out at my repo. But if you wanna see how to build this from scratch, then stick with me, come into the arcade and we'll do this now. Okay, so let's fire up Xcode. Let's create a brand new UI kit app. Let's call it Currency Fun. Let's go ahead and stick that on our desktop. And let's begin by just going into this view controller and setting up some basic stuff. I've got a code snippet I use whenever I'm creating new view controllers like this. And all a code snippet is, it's a little shortcut that I create when I want to pump out commonly used code. This one happens to be called new view controller with a stack view. All I have here is a stack view with a label embedded inside it. I actually don't even want to use the stack view in this case. All I really want is a label in the middle of my screen. So this is just standard programmatic view controller stuff. All we've got here is a label, which I'm going to add to the sub view and center in the screen. And if we run this after I switch this stack view to a label, we should just see the word welcome appear in the middle of our screen. And there we go. Okay, let's just start with this. Okay, if you're new to programming and you're wondering why or how should we represent money in an app, the most common way is to do it with a decibel. Why? Well, because representing floating point numbers in apps is actually kind of tricky. When you take numbers like one third, which is 0 0.333 repeating, those don't exactly line up to a very specific floating point number. So when you're adding and working with floating points, um, this can be a bit of a problem. Decimal is the recommended way to represent money in languages like Swift and other languages. You can also do calculations by converting all your dollars and cents into integers. We're not going to do that here, but basically that's why we're starting with a decimal. That's how we're going to represent our currency as money. Now to begin our formatting journey, why don't we just take this amount and print it out simply as a string in that label, simply by creating a string, printing it like this, and let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so that just takes our amount, prints it out as a plain old decimal. What we'd like to do is format this as currency. Let's look at the simplest way and how we could do that using the number formatter. What we can do is just create a computed var here called a mounted format, and let's just see what this thing does. What this is using is using a built-in number formatter that comes as part of the uh, Swift language. So basically it's a number formatter you create, you can specify the type of format you want. In this case, we want currency, but there's other things you can do. You can do percents, scientific, ordinals, things like that. But we want currency. We can specify that we'd like the grouping, or in the case of the English language, the comma that we want to appear as our currency numbers get bigger. And as you can see, we have one slight problem. 
in that this number formatter wants a double and not a, a decimal. So we need to convert this decimal into a double. We can do that with a nice little extension like this. We can just add an extension onto decimal called double value, and that will take our double, convert it into an NS decimal number, and then basically we can use that when we do our formatting. So if we go ahead and do that, we create this formatter, we do some formatting, and then we take our amount and we format it, we can then replace the text in our label that we had there with this formatted amount. And if we run that, we should now see a nice dollar sign, comma grouped, formatted currency appearing on our string. And for most apps, this is really good and all you really need. You just wanna print out some currency. Well, using the number formatter, here you go. Now, if you want to do something fancier, something that has a dollar sign displaced up, you have your formatted currency like this grouped with a comma, and then you have just the cent signs also displaced from the bottom by a certain amount. In Swift and iOS, we do this using something called an attributed string. Attributed strings are just fancy strings we can format. We can move things around, uh, have multiple uh, fonts. We can even embed images in them. We're gonna use this attributed string to get this nice fancy layout for our currency. Now, of course, because this is a little more complex, there's some more work involved in doing this. First, we're gonna use a C routine called mod F, which is gonna take our double number and break it into dollars and cents. Then we're gonna take the dollar portion of that. We're gonna apply a number formatter to it, get it in this nice grouped dollar sign, which we just saw how to do in the simple case. We'll then drop the decimals so we get just this amount and we'll drop that dollar sign so we just get the dollar amount and we'll pass that into a routine we're gonna create which will format just the dollar portion of that string. Then we'll do the same thing on the cents side. We'll take our number, we'll split it into dollars and cents. For the cents, we're gonna format that to two decimal places so we get just the six three in this case. We're then gonna drop the period and then once we have the cents represented as a string, we'll pass that into our attributed string function and it will go ahead and format it like that. Now there's a couple of interesting things going on in here. Let's break it down and go through these really slowly and see how to build this from scratch. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and actually delete almost everything we add in here and just copy in some code to save some time. Don't worry, we're gonna go through this very meticulously together, but it's basically just the exact same format, a view controller with a label centered in the middle, but now I've brought in the code which does the attributed string work. And let's go through this one step at a time. Okay, first of all, let's talk about how we separate our double, our decimal, once we've converted it into a double, how do we separate it into dollars and cents? Well, this is a really cool routine called mod F. So here I am in a computed var, I'm just going formatted dollars and cents. What I want to do is take that dollar amount, our decimal, and convert it into a dollar and cents portion. And it turns out there's a mod F routine that does this. Now you won't find any description for this. In fact, it's really mysterious if you uh, control command click into there, you'll be taken into a library with a whole bunch of floating point and logarithmic calculations. And you'll notice we're in something called Darwin. This is part of an older operating system Apple created years ago, but it's still used today. This is a C routine, which basically breaks up, here it is here, it breaks up string functions into floating point and decimal function parts. So when you call mod f on a double, it takes that double and breaks it up into the integer and fractional part. Now this is kind of exactly what we wanna see done here. We want dollars and cents, so we can take our decimal, sorry, our double, and break it into dollars and cents using this routine here. Now what's interesting about this is if we look at what it returns, it returns something called a tuple. And basically this is a return with two types in it one representing the integer and one representing the floating. 
And this is really, really cool because we don't usually have many examples of where a tuple actually makes sense in programming, but this is one here. And for those of you who've never seen a tuple before, when you don't know how these things work, it's basically think of them as a function that returns not just one type, but more than one type, in this case, two. For example, if I wanted to represent an HTTP call as the error code and a string, I could create a tuple for that like this. This variable here, error, has two parts to it, a code as an integer and a string of the description. And then the way you get these individual parts out of a tuple is you go basically by their index. So if I have an error and I go error zero, I will get the code, this 404. And if I go error one, I will get this part here, the not found. That's what tuples are. And you don't see them a lot, but in certain cases, they're very, very handy. And in this case, this is what this mod f uh, function returns. So what you're seeing here with this attributed var I've created, computed var, is we're going formatted dollars and cents. I'm going to return, the return type here is going to be a string of dollars and a string of cents. That's what's going on here. So we do this, so we take our decimal value here, or sorry, our double converted into a decimal, sorry, our decimal converted into a double. We do a mod f on that, we get these parts. Of course, in this case here, one thing we want to do is we want to strip out the cent sign. So we need in our language, the representation of a decimal here. That's what's going on with this decimal formatter. All I'm trying to do here is get the decimal representation of the string, separating it out so I can just get the dollar part. And then basically at this point here, I've got just my dollar portion, $100,000. Now, the way I want to actually format this is because our dollar sign is separate from the actual dollar amount here, I want to strip out the dollar sign because I'm going to format that later in this attributed string. So that's what we're doing here through move first. We're taking $100,000, stripping out the dollar sign so we just have 100,000 grouped and commaed nicely. And at that point, we're good. We've got our dollar amount here. Now we just need to format the cents. If we look at the cents now, we're just gonna take the cents, format it to two decimal places, so it looks something like this, and then just remove the decimal. That's what remove first does. This is a bit weird. It takes a string and it actually modifies the string itself to strip off or remove the first point. That's why this is a var and not a let. And that's how we get our cents. So we've got our dollars, we've got our cents, now we return them as a tuple. And that's what gets returned when we call this here. So when we go amount attributed, this is basically the computed var, which is gonna do all of our, it's gonna create the attributed string for us. First thing we get is our parts, our dollars and cents, which we just went through, that's a tuple. We grab the dollar part, we grab the cent part, and then we pass that into this function here which is gonna create our NS attributed string. And that is just down here. For those of you who've never seen attributed strings, this is basically the way we build them. We create a dictionary of the attributes we wanna modify, and we specify them with these keys like this, and then we set things on them. We can set, for example, the font on just the dollar sign attribute. So with this line here, with a baseline offset of eight, what we're saying is I want to create or define this dollar sign with the baseline offset of eight, we're bumping it up eight points here. And we're just describing the attributes of that dollar sign. For the dollar attributes, well here we're gonna have a different font, we're gonna call this title one, and here we're defining the attributes just for this part here. It's gonna be title one. And then for the sense, we break down just the attribute for the sense. Here we're gonna have the same baseline offset of eight. We're just gonna bump it up. And then basically that's how we define the attributes of this string. Once we've got those defined, we can actually assign the string representation we want to go into each. Here's the dollar sign. Here it's the dollar attributes, which is the string we calculated from before. And here's the sense. Then we append these things up. So we bring them all together and then we return an NS mutable attributed string, which is like an NS attributed string, but it's mutable. It doesn't really matter for us. When we call this, we're gonna get a mutable string back. 
And that is what we can use to basically um, set on our label. So when we come down here and we actually look at how to use this, what you'll see here is on our label, we're not setting text. Normally when you set text on a label, you go like this. Here we're setting the attributed text. And that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna take our attributed text, which we went through all that work of calculating. And when we run this, this is what we get. And it's a really nice effect. You can see here, we've got the nice offset of the uh, dollar sign coming up to the top. We've got our, our amount here and our cents here. And this is how people work that magic when you see something really fancy like this in iOS. This is how they're laying it out. Okay, well there you have it folks. How to do currency conversion in Swift. Now I know I went through that a little bit quickly. What I want you to do if you really want to see how this works is come on down here uh, to the Swift Arcade repo. And down under Swift, you'll see a section here, a link called Currency Formatting. Here you can see all the text, all the examples. Please download this, check it out, play with it. And the reason why I created this video is actually for two reasons. One, I needed to do this recently in a project I'm working on. But two, I'm actually working on a new course. It's called iOS Professional. It's going to show it's going to take people from building basic iOS apps into more professional iOS apps. And in there, I'm going to show you how to do things like currency formatting, but also how Agile works, how to use Git, how to really get into some of the deeper aspects of UIKit and really use it professionally on projects. So if you're interested in that, uh, do hit like, do hit subscribe. I will give updates as we go. And then hopefully sometime in the near future, you'll see that rolling out. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming, everyone. Hope that was useful. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.